I'm Stephen Foskett. I'm the organizer of the Tech Field Day event series. What you're about to see is a presentation with uh, Dell EMC and a panel of independent writers and speakers from around the world who focus on enterprise IT technology. If you'd like to see more about this, you can go to techfieldday.com. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it, go to youtube.com slash techfieldday. So uh, I'll make a quick introduction. So my name is David Noy. I'm VP Product Management for Isilon. Uh, and with me is John Hayden. I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, uh, John Hayden, uh, VP of Engineering for Isilon, uh, run engineering worldwide for Isilon. Uh, one of uh, Dell EMC's distinguished engineers and been with uh, EMC in various capacities like this for the last uh, 18 years or so. Excellent. So we'll take you through a pretty broad agenda today. Um, obviously, there'll be a lot of questions and answers. There's a lot of slides in this deck, uh, which is really um, actually kind of against my theory because I think slides take a long time to go through. I don't want to bore you with PowerPoints. So I'm going to run through some of these pretty quickly. Um, so forgive me if I'm going pretty fast. Absolutely stop me for questions. We have both John and myself here. We can answer any questions that you have. I have a whiteboard here to draw on, and that's probably where we'll get a lot primarily uh, you know, the media for answering your questions. <coughs> Um, so just a little bit of history, or actually to start with an agenda. I'm going to take you through a company overview. I'm going to do it pr pretty quickly, about 15 minutes. Um, product overview, about 15 minutes of kind of our value proposition, who we are. Uh, I'll take you through a technical discussion, and John will assist me with that if with any deep questions. That'll probably run about maybe an hour or so, and then about a 30 minutes of uh, workload focus and differentiation, basically where we focus our efforts and how we're different from our competitors. <clears throat> so Iceland Company Overview. So the company was formed in 2001 by Sujal Patel, at Real, who was at Real Media. He's looking for a way to stream data very quickly. Obviously, Real Media, as a media streaming company, uh, had challenges around how do you move a lot of throughput, a lot of bandwidth. And the answer is that, you know, it's not easy to do unless you can take advantage of a lot of spindles. Spindles have basically a certain amount of throughput that they can generate. And if you can basically take advantage of a lot, a lot, a lot of spindles, then you can get aggregate throughputs and aggregate performance, which is enough to drive some of the media applications, which back in those, those days was pretty difficult to do. In 2003, Isilon shipped their first product for a grand total of $3 million in revenue. Uh, we've gone quite a way since then. Uh, we began to see interest in a number of vertical markets around our products, markets that were focused on this kind of sequential streaming video, or sorry, streaming media, uh, life sciences for genomic sequencing, oil and gas with seismic processing, web 2.0 with content delivery, and so on and so forth. Anywhere we had large files that had to move at a very fast rate, uh, or basically grow a file system to a very large capacity uh, this idea of basically aggregating a bunch of spinning disk into a very large pool of storage was a very valuable uh, uh, thing to do. And something that most of the filers, in fact, all of the filers that were in the market at the time were not able to do. They were constrained by capacity. And so the, uh, basically the, a number of different products started to grow out of this. Uh, with the uh, node-based architecture that Scaleout is known for, which is basically the idea that you add nodes into a system, the nodes add capacity and they add performance. And so it just becomes a very modular growth. As you add an additional node, you get more performance, you get more capacity. The file system just automatically grows. And so you have a file system that's continuing to grow, but again, capacity and performance grow linearly. Now, people have different kinds of requirements, whether they're archive requirements for holding large amounts of data for a very large time, in which case they're trying to optimize things like uh, price per capacity, or they could be performance requirements, like we talked about with this Web 2.0, or sorry, life sciences genomic sequencing, uh, in which case you're looking for more of a how do I scale my performance as I add more nodes into the system. And so we built different node types that as you add them are tilted more towards one metric or another metric. In some cases, they're adding more density, more capacity. In some cases, they're adding more performance. All of these can be combined into the same cluster and again, provide a single namespace and a single file system but the file system has different attributes depending on which parts of the cluster it actually resides on. So EMC acquired Isilon in 2010 for $2.5 billion, 10 times revenue, uh, and provided a, a significant support and direction. It basically opened up a bunch of new markets for us. So what I'll show you later is really how that changed 
the initial set of verticals that Isilon was focused on and deflected that curve massively as we picked up a large uh, sales force as well as a number of different customers in different verticals. So you'll see kind of how that deflection occurred and you'll see this basically expand into a bunch of different verticals. And so what was originally maybe three or four key verticals for us where they had those kind of workloads suddenly became a whole uh, slew of, of verticals and that drove a bunch of different requirements because as you can imagine, the requirements in financial services versus the requirements in the life sciences and genomics in a company are very different. <clears throat> From a momentum perspective, this shows our revenue over time. So as you can see, very, very rapid growth. And of course, there's this uh, knee in the J curve right here, which is the EMC acquisition. So post IPO, you have an IPO event in 2008, you have an acquisition in 2010, and then boom, basically rapid growth. And continue to move on this curve. So this is a very encouraging curve. This is what makes it a lot of fun to work here. We're now at a point where we have 8,000 customers worldwide and we're growing at about, call it 1,200 to 1,300 customers a year. Uh, we have, uh, we've been rated number one in data lakes. Now I'll go through kind of what a data lake is in a moment. There may be a new term for you or maybe familiar with that term. Uh, Gartner and IDC both rate us as the number one scale out NAS solution across a number of different uh, uh, metrics that they, that they compare us to our competitors with. And uh, actually recently they, there was a file and object kind of a combined view of EMC compared to all of the other vendors. And we were far to the right in the leaders quadrant uh, for Gartner um, compared to any of the competitors, actually with a wide gap. So in the file and object space, Dell EMC is known as a massive leader uh, in the magic quadrant. In terms of uh, other, other statistics that are pretty interesting, every day, uh, 2 billion users, or maybe it's uh, on an annualized basis, 2 billion users view something coming off of an Isilon. So we started in media entertainment. It was really one of our largest verticals. It remains one of our largest verticals. Now it fluctuates between number one and number two for us, but it's interesting that about a third of the world's population watches content that it originates on an Isilon storage. Uh, we have 2 million video surveillance cameras worldwide. We're at eight of the 10 top pharmaceuticals 11 of the 18 hospitals, eight of the 10 global retail banks, top 10 global retails. And you can just see that we're in a number of these verticals were well represented. Now here's an example, as I showed you, of kind of what the EMC effect is and how it impacted basically our vertical, our vertical reach. Whereas we started in media entertainment, some high tech and life sciences, after the acquisition, as we gained access to the EMC sales force, we we're introduced into a number of other customers. We gained credibility as basically the, you know, the EMC brand brought to us and we expanded into a bunch of other verticals. And you can see that basically where three verticals drove 70% of the growth pre-EMC, we diversified into this whole slew of additional verticals post acquisition. This is as of 2014. At that point, we had 5,000 customers and a 5X increase in cluster capacity on the average cluster size. And of course, now we're at 8,000 and we continue to grow at that rate. 